Today we have a very special tour. It is a HQ of Warm Audio's brand new headquarters in Austin, Texas. And before we get into that, check this out. Oh, 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 look at this box. This is so freaking nice. Let me know down in the comments if you know what's in there. This will be in another video very soon. Um, but yeah, this was something we actually went out there earlier this year and it was a bunch of fun. We did their a studio tour of their crazy, like absolutely ridiculous recording studio at their HQ. And I have a video of that. I'll link it somewhere if you want to check that out after this video, of course, because like the whole headquarters the building, all the offices, the techs, the quality check, the warehouse, like everything in there, getting to meet the staff. It was it was super fun. So I asked Bryce if we could just do like a general headquarters walkthrough and get a behind the scenes look at all of that. And I think it was pretty awesome. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Hit the like button, subscribe, all that stuff. But first, it is another Monday video. So thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video and this channel and supporting what I do. As you guys can see, I'm a big warm audio fan. I thought it might be fitting to just say, hey, we're going to check out the HQ. If there's any of this stuff that I have or that you see in this video that you guys want to check out, hit the links in the description. I have links to all of the stuff that I use here in my studio down there. There are affiliate links. So again, thank you Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Also take another guess at what's in here. Be very excited to uh, make a video on that. So yeah, let's go check out Warm Audio. Seen the studio. Seen the studio. Can we check out the rest of the headquarters? Let's go check it out. Get a yeah. insider look. So here's our lobby. When we designed this building, we were a lot smaller company, so we thought we were designing it for like future growth. Yeah. And then after we moved in, we're like, oh, it's already getting kind of full. And oh. The warehouse is full, and so luckily we own a couple acres. Yeah. Uh, right across the way, so we may may expand. But yeah, wanted it to be a step up before we were just in a kind of a shabby warehouse and didn't really have good space. Us being studio guys, do you see these diff these uh, absorbers yeah, up here? Sounds good. Yeah, so it used to be really, really echoey and reverby. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Wisconsin, Madison. Wisconsin? Wisconsin. Yeah. And um, in Madison, Butch Vig's studio. Oh yeah. It's like 10 minutes from my house growing up and it was in this like unmarked warehouse looking building. Yeah. And one day as a kid, I was like, I'm gonna go knock on Butch Vig's studio's door. And I knocked on the door and they opened the door and like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah give us a call. Why are you here? You know, yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was cool knowing that a lot of cool records when I was growing up because I was, born in the 80s so yeah. growing up in the 90s that's when he was doing a lot of the stuff was yeah, right there man. in Madison. Yeah I'm from Illinois yeah. so okay Midwest cornfield gang. This is our repair room so if a product comes back needs a repair mm -hmm. um, or it fails initial inspection it goes into this room. Okay uh, I'll, let's peek our heads in here real quick. Oh wow that looks cool. So we've got Bruce, Sam and this guy Don. Hey. Yeah. Hello. And this originally was um, gonna be kind of a fulfillment office room, but we were like, oh, this makes sense to put our repair guys in here. And so they helped me with prototypes too. So if I'm working on a prototype or our other product development guys are working on it, we need things changed or modified here, put in this capacitor or whatever. Yeah. They help us out with all that. So we got a warehouse through there and then we've got the QA room, which is actually a pretty cool room. We can, we can go ahead through here. To, cool. Get in there. Yeah, so this is uh, the quality assurance or testing room. Um, this may seem like a basic room, but what I love about this is this shows our customers what we do. We open every single unit yeah. that electrically plugs in, is opened up, tested, and um, boxed back up. It's all done here in Austin, Texas. Check this out. So we have our own little patch panel over oh, wow. here. So we've got 96 channels of audio running into the wall, and then you've got at each station, so if they're testing a compressor, they can say, okay, what does a kick drum sound like through this compressor? Ah. We also have a microphone connected to each station in an isolation booth yep. out in the warehouse, and so they can connect a preamp to a microphone that is not picking up any noise in the room. It's silent, so they yeah. can hear if there's any humming or buzzing. Oh, cool. And on some of the preamps, we have to tune out the toroid noise and stuff, so they do you know, little custom tweaks to product as they come in. There, see, he's like tightening a knob that wasn't maybe tightened as tight as it should have been from the factory. 
Wow. Oh my God. This Yeah, is so this incredible. warehouse, when we designed the building, we thought would be just way too big and give us tons <laughs> of growing room. But as you can see, we just received a shipment in and we're like, oh, where do we fit it all? Yeah. We are gonna add a few more racks up on top of here. Holy cow. Add some more product, but we can fit currently um, close to 500 pallets in here. Larry, the warehouse manager, has always got a great assortment of 80s music. Usually it's 80s metal, like it fits him exactly what you'd expect. Like right here, Bon Jovi even signed something for him, like he's a big Bon Jovi fan. Um, but today, I guess it's 80s pop. This is where a lot of the finished, tested, product ready to ship is. What I love is like coming down here and going, oh wow, an entire pallet of 251s. Can you imagine? putting like 10 251s on a drum set or a whole band or whatever. So, I mean, in theory, right? If somebody yeah. wanted to go nuts in the studio and yeah. have like just an insane assortment of, of instruments all going simultaneously, we could accommodate that, I guess, if we wanted to. There is something that I got to show you guys that is studio related. Yeah. If you're building a warehouse, you have to have a patch panel in the warehouse because maybe you want to like, broadcast a speaker in here and have the reverb of the studio. Oh. So check that bad boy. Oh, nice. That goes back to the studio. <laughs> or if you ever wanted to put a loud guitar amp out here and pick up the, the reverb. So what is the footprint of this building? The footprint is about 17,000 square feet, but if you include the upstairs, you add another eight to that. So it's, you oh know, my gosh. around 25. Here's this ISO booth. This is kind of funny. So I actually, oh there was a lady that was selling this. Her husband uh, was an audiologist, and he used this to, you know, test people's ears. Put them in this booth, and there's a patch panel here. Yeah. He would test their, you know, in a silent room. So this is where we put those microphones that are supposed to be in kind of a well. It's become a storage room. Yeah. But there's microphones in there that go back to the QA room. Um, yeah. So they can be in a silent place. That's crazy. Yeah. It's like a bank vault. Yeah. Here's our Carnhill Transformers we use in the in the 73 series, Mike Prees. Oh, so these are straight from the UK. Um, All you the know. knobs. Yeah, I got knobs and pretty much anything. We have a replacement of anything if we yeah. need it. So let's see, anything else interesting here? Here we go, we got microphone capsules. And, oh my gosh, that's so you awesome. Know, here's the, the 67 PCB board, you know, the, the, tube, the tube connection, or at least that's one of the boards. Lundahl Sweden Transformers, this goes in our 67. So we've got, yeah, pretty much anything, anything and everything. <laughs> you yeah. know, there's a mic body. Um, people hit us up, hey, I dropped my mic, I broke this or that. And yeah. We always want to have it on hand. And That's sweet. We want to pride ourselves, I guess, in being able to get back to people quickly and getting them back up and running. Yeah, the whoever you had design, interior design and everything looks amazing. So we own that piece of land right there. And when we put in this building, they said, hey, you have to have sprinkler heads everywhere and be able to put out a fire. Mm -hmm. And you have to have the ability to put it out, but hey, there's no city water out here. So you have to build a tank oh my gosh. with enough water in it to put out a huge massive fire. So that's a 200,000 gallon water tank. Oh my gosh. And it's connected to a well. It's getting water from the ground. So it's full though, so we're good. But all the water here is, is coming from a well and then Inside that um, that house there mm -hmm. is a diesel pump about the size of a car that has to have the power to pump 200,000 gallons of water in the event of a fire. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's pretty ridiculous because yeah. they're like, hey, you got to be able to put out a fire, but by the way, we're not going to give you any water. Yeah. So go figure out how to put out that fire. Yeah. Those, so those are the things that, that you didn't plan no. in the beginning. Like, oh yeah, let's set aside money yeah. for the tank. Yeah, cool shot out at the warehouse. So actually, when we were building the building, we didn't plan to have those windows there. And then they were loading in lumber through that hole. And I was like, oh, we should put windows there. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So I don't know if we talked much about our secondary brand. That's more for podcasting YouTubers, creators. Uh -huh. So it's 512 Audio based on the um, 512 area code for Austin. Oh, right. right. That's what that stands for. And um, there's the Austin skyline. So that's, that's actually on the UPC barcodes and on the boxes for 512 products. We're trying to right. kind of tie back that Austin music vibe. We got our conference room. Um, we now have 
close to 40 employees, so we can't fit everybody in here, but we yeah. do hold larger meetings in here. My office is a bit messy. Yeah. I mean, we, can take a, we can take a gander in there real quick. Yeah. What's most exciting about this office is not the messy desk and yeah. the paperwork, but this little secret room that I have back here that I oh, still, nice. after being in the building for a year, yeah. still haven't set up this room, but it's supposed to be a mini studio room. But what it's ended up turning into is like a storage space because I'm in between houses. I'm in an apartment while we're building a house. And so as you can see, we got some vinyl collection vinyl, going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. So you vinyl, know, I'm big amp. into vinyl. So like a 1973 first year UK press. Whoa. So I'm big into finding, you know, old early pressing vinyl and a little bit of a nerd when it comes, it comes to that stuff. Now this is special. Look at that on the wow. wall. Now you won't believe this. At our last warehouse, uh -huh. one day I just went out to the dumpster and that was sitting in the top of the dumpster. I have oh. no idea where it came from. What? I don't know who made it. But who I was threw like, it away? I was like, yeah, I'm like, I'm taking this and I'm staining it brown and I'm hanging it up. Again, thank you for having us and showing us around and I'm yeah, sure it'll come by. be cool for people at home to be able to see the inside of Warm Audio and 512. And yeah, thanks for coming by. Yeah. Really cool to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, get some new gear. And uh, see you later. No, no, no.